in the last video we talked about seizures remember those sudden electrical storms in the brain that can make a person freeze shake or stare blankly well today we're turning that thunderstorm into a full on weather report because when seizures keep happening again and again that's when we call it epilepsy welcome to this episode of the disease decoded series at dog decoded so grab your cup of coffee or your eeg machine just kidding and let's dive in Imagine your brain is a giant city with billions of lights each light representing a nerve cell now once in a while one light flickers that's a seizure but if it keeps happening like a power grid malfunction that's epilepsy today we'll decode what causes it the overview of its management and most importantly why living with epilepsy is not the end of the world but before that hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon because your brain deserves weekly updates not just electric ones so what exactly is epilepsy you might think epilepsy is one disease but actually it's a group of conditions where a person has repeated seizures that aren't caused by temporary things like fever low sugar or alcohol withdrawal in simple words one seizure doesn't mean epilepsy repeated unprovoked seizures that's epilepsy fun fact did you know even the famous painter vincent van gogh is believed to have had epilepsy So yes having epilepsy doesn't stop creativity it might even make your art more electrifying why does epilepsy happen now your brain is basically an electrical network neurons send signals to help you move think and even binge watch youtube at 2 am but sometimes a few neurons go rogue firing signals all at once causing a brain short circuit causes of seizures according to age when doctors try to find out why a person has seizures One of the most important things they look at is age because the causes of seizures are often different at different stages of life. One, neonatal period and early infancy. Newborns and very young babies. In newborns, seizures can happen due to several reasons such as lack of oxygen to the brain, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy during or after birth, head injury or trauma during delivery, brain infections, CNS infections. birth defects in the brain congenital cns abnormalities metabolic disorders problems with the way the baby's body processes nutrients and energy babies born to mothers who used drugs like cocaine heroin or alcohol during pregnancy can have drug withdrawal seizures in the first few days after birth other causes include low blood sugar hypoglycemia or low calcium hypocalcemia which can occur after perinatal injury some babies have inborn errors of metabolism and seizures may start once regular feeding begins usually 2 to 3 days after birth a deficiency of pyridoxine vitamin b6 can also cause neonatal seizures and this can be treated effectively with vitamin b6 replacement therapy sometimes seizures in this age group are idiopathic no known cause or inherited genetic 2 late infancy and early childhood The most common seizures in this age group are febrile seizures. Seizures that occur with fever but without any brain infection or other disease. These are quite common. Seen in about 3 to 5% of children. Children with a family history of febrile seizures or epilepsy are more likely to experience them. Febrile seizures usually occur between 3 months and 5 years. Most often between 18 and 24 months. A typical situation is when a child has a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, whole body shaking, during a fever caused by a common infection like ear infection, otitis media, respiratory infection or gastroenteritis. Simple febrile seizures are single, short, 15 minutes and generalized. Complex febrile seizures last more than 15 minutes, may repeat within 24 hours or involve only one side of the body focal features. About 1/3 of children with febrile seizures will have another episode. but less than 10% will have three or more recurrence is more likely when the first seizure occurs in the first year of life simple febrile seizures do not increase the risk of epilepsy while complex ones carry a 2 to 5% risk other risk factors include pre-existing neurological problems or a family history of non-febrile seizures 3 during childhood many specific epilepsy syndromes become apparent some children who are otherwise healthy may develop idiopathic generalized tonic clonic seizures while others fit into specific syndromes temporal lobe epilepsy often begins in this age 
and may be related to mesial temporal lobe sclerosis, MTLE syndrome, or other brain abnormalities like cortical dysgenesis, abnormal brain tissue development. Other focal seizures can later spread and become generalized. These may occur due to developmental brain disorders, head injury, acquired lesion, CNS infections, especially viral encephalitis, or rarely a CNS tumor. 4. Adolescence and early adulthood. This period is a transition phase. Some genetic or idiopathic epilepsies, such as juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, JME, and juvenile absence epilepsy appear during this time but become less common with age. Epilepsies caused by acquired brain lesions like head trauma, stroke, become more common. Other causes include CNS infections, including neurocystis, ercosis, brain tumors, congenital brain abnormalities, illicit drug use or alcohol withdrawal, autoimmune causes, where the body's immune system attacks brain cells, producing autoantibodies against potassium channels or glutamate receptors. Autoimmune epilepsy may cause frequent prolonged seizures along with psychiatric symptoms like mood or behavior changes and memory or thinking problems. 5. Head trauma-related epilepsy Head injury is a major cause of epilepsy in adolescents and adults. The risk depends on how severe the injury is. Severe head injuries with penetrating wounds, depressed skull fractures, intracranial bleeding or coma amnesia have a 30-50% to 50 chance of leading to epilepsy. Moderate injuries like closed head injury or cerebral contusions carry about a 5-25% to 25 risk. Mild head injuries such as concussion with brief unconsciousness, 30 minutes, have only a slight risk, though rare cases of chronic epilepsy can occur. Most post-traumatic seizures appear within one year of the injury, but some may occur even after 10 years. 6. In older adults, the most common causes of seizures are Cerebrovascular disease Strokes Among people over 65 years, stroke accounts for nearly half of all epilepsy cases. Acute seizures occur soon after a stroke, especially embolic strokes, while chronic seizures develop months or years later after any type of stroke, hemorrhagic or thrombotic. Subdural hematoma, brain tumours, CNS tumours, degenerative brain diseases like Alzheimer's disease also cause seizure in older adults. 7. Metabolic and systemic causes, all ages. Certain metabolic problems can also trigger seizures such as electrolyte imbalance, abnormal sodium, calcium or potassium levels, low or high blood sugar, kidney failure, renal failure, liver failure, hepatic failure, endocrine or blood disorders like anemia, vasculitis. Some medications and substance abuse can also lower the seizure threshold and cause seizures. It's like your brain having its own DJ party. But instead of beats, it's firing off electrical impulses randomly. Have you ever witnessed someone having a seizure? What did you do in that situation? Comment below. Let's see how many of you actually knew what to do and how many just froze like a statue. We've already discussed. Watch from the end screen. If this is making your brain light up with curiosity, give this video a thumbs up. Helps me fight the YouTube algorithm seizures. Have you heard some prevalent misconceptions or fear facts about epilepsy? As you, people with epilepsy can't lead normal lives. It's totally wrong. With proper treatment, most people live absolutely normal lives. Go to school, drive, if seizure free, marry and even become doctors or YouTubers. Just be in observation and precautions from a dangerous environment. A fun fact for you. Julius Caesar, the famous Roman emperor, is believed to have had epilepsy and he still managed to rule an empire. So yeah, if he could manage Rome, you can manage life. How is epilepsy diagnosed? Diagnosing epilepsy isn't about guesswork. Doctors use science, not astrology. Tests include EEG, electroencephalogram, to detect abnormal electrical activity. MRI or CT scan to check for structural brain problems. Blood tests to rule out infections or other triggers. Sometimes you may need to record the seizures like a security camera for your brain. Still with me? Awesome! Smash that subscribe button and share as it helps YouTube to sense as useful content. That way, we can reach out to those who needs to hear this. Treatment and Management Epilepsy is treatable in most cases. However, treatment and cure rate is variable. Depends on the cause and type. Here is just an overview. More detailed discussion will be in the next video based on the type of seizure a person is suffering from. 1. Anti-epileptic medications 
these control seizures in about 70% of people. Take them regularly. Missing doses is like giving your brain permission to party unsupervised. Tip. Always take medicines at the same time every day and never stop suddenly. 2. Surgery. For some with specific brain lesions, removing that part can stop seizures. Surprised? Comment. Yes, if it's a new knowledge for you. 3. Vagus nerve stimulation or special diets like ketogenic diet. Used in people whose seizures don't respond to medicines. Basically, the goal is to keep your brain calm, not make it behave like a disco ball. Life with epilepsy. Having epilepsy doesn't define who you are. You can study, work, marry, travel, just with some precautions. Take medicines regularly. Sleep well. Lack of sleep can trigger seizures. Avoid flashing lights or stress. Reduce risk factors like stroke, fall, injury. Inform friends or co-workers about your condition so they can help if needed. Support matters a lot. People with epilepsy often face stigma. So if you know someone with it, show empathy, not fear. The world celebrates Epilepsy Awareness Day on March 26th, called Purple Day. Because purple represents calmness and bravery, something every epilepsy warrior deserves. What's the most surprising thing you learned today about epilepsy? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to see what shocked you the most. If you found that useful, share this video. Because you never know who might need to know this someday. Let's spread awareness, not misinformation. Epilepsy isn't a curse or a punishment. It's a neurological condition that's absolutely manageable with proper care. People with epilepsy can dream big, achieve great things and live fully. And if you or someone you know has epilepsy, Remember, the goal is not to hide it, but to understand it. That's it for today's episode of Dog Decoded. And here's your brainy reward. Fun fact to end with. Dogs can actually be trained to detect seizures before they happen. Some people call them seizure alert dogs. How cool is that? Maybe my dog just predicts when I open a packet of chips. But hey, close enough. Stay healthy, stay curious. And see you next time on Dog Decoded, where we decode health. One myth at a time.